Hello and welcome. I am in training for the Vegas finals of the Microsoft Excel World Championships 2024. Uh, and as I've teased a little bit before, part of my training this year uh, is getting used to a cool new uh, tool called OA Robot uh, that I have been playing around with and lots of other people have been playing around with because it is in, uh, I guess, semi, semi-public, semi-private uh, beta at the moment. Uh, if you're interested, Go over to, I think it's oarobot.com. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, and there's an option to sign up and they're they're rapidly onboarding people. Um, Eric has put up a, a video solving a, a case with Robot before. Um, and I've kind of showed briefly in my last video how I use it for kind of writing and editing lambdas, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that it does, which again, I'm still getting up to speed on, but I'm, I'm a little closer now. I'm happy to to kind of take it for a, a spin. So I'm going to be revisiting Réunion, the volcano island by Julien Lacaz, uh, a sensitive case for me because it's the one that I got knocked out on. Uh, but there you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's just kind of give you the general idea. So the idea is we've got a map of Réunion uh, with uh, all these arrows showing so there's, it's a volcanic island. So you know, lava pops up here, then it's going to flow in this direction, and then in this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and so on. Uh, if it hits a river, or if it hits the ocean, uh, then it stops. Uh, so we've got two maps. We've got one with all the arrows, and then we've got one that just handily uh, names these colors. So like R is the river, and H is a hill, and I don't remember what the other things stand for, but we'll figure it out as we go. Um, and I think that's basically it. Uh, key thing to show you here is uh, there's nothing in the name manager right now because the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I guess I'll, I'll start my timer first, but the first thing I'm going to do when I do is uh, import my lambdas and it's going to be so much faster than before. So watch this. All right, I'm going to start my timer. I'm going to hit my predefined keyboard shortcut and then oh, ignore that. It says it's gone wrong, but it hasn't gone wrong. And there's all my lambdas brought in. Uh, then I'm going to quickly come over here, just name these two. Uh, oops, this, I'm going to name this MP for map, and this one I'm going to name TP for topography. And then let's get solving. <clears throat> so, uh, what's the direction associated with the listed cell? So, I've been building my, uh, my lambda set here, so turn that uh, address into a reference in this area in the map. <clears throat> and the nice thing about this, uh, thanks mostly to some clever work by Bo Ridbon with his uh, with his Roco update, is there's no indirect in here, uh, which means that I'm, as we build up lots and lots of this level, and there's lots and lots of you know pointing at things, uh, it's not going to start to really creak uh, because of having indirect in there as as other versions of this do. And now we can do uh, bonus one among all the possible directions. One is not in the level one answers, so I've got uh, built in. Where is it here? Got a built-in name for arrows, uh, so I just want to filter arrows where count ifs. Uh, this is arrows is zero. That gives me that one. What is the cell where lava appears most frequently on level one to seven, excluding examples? So I've got a fun new one here. Get level data, uh, and I can tell it that I only want one column of data because the cell reference is always in the first column. And then I can uh, wrap with most of, uh, and then I can come here and put that in. Okay. Uh, how many cells that contain water are there on the map? This is a little bit of trickiness because uh, water can be either river or the sea. Uh, I and I think a number of other people quickly was like, "Oh, lots of water here! All right, I'll count how many blank cells there are." I got it wrong. Uh, so this is count blank of TP plus count ifs. Uh, TP is R, uh, and then the rest depend on labor levels. So let's go on. So you're given a cell where magma pops, and you have to figure out where it goes next. So the first part of this is uh, convert an address to a cell reference on MP to get the arrow, uh, and then the second part of this, this is where I've been less a robot thing, but more playing around with my lambdas. Uh, I have a handy function that converts uh, either a uh, cell reference or an arrow or an arrow with a multiple uh, into this row column code. So like this 28 million and 17 is saying it's in row 28, column 17. Uh, this 1 million is saying it's adding one to the row. Uh, so then I can just uh, wrap 
one sum. Uh, and then I just need to uh, convert this back to an address. That's it. Paste that there. Copy down. Ooh, okay, it didn't like copy down for some reason. Never mind. There's still some things I'm figuring out if I'm using them the right way or not, so don't worry too much about that. All right, so that's level two. Level three, the magma quantity will now be taken into account for level three only. You'll have a constant quantity of 15. All right, so what, here what I need is, uh, first I want uh, two RC ref of this. So that's my starting point. Uh, and then I want RC ref to ref of that on the map will tell me that's the arrow. Uh, and then I want to convert that arrow to a row column reference. So that's a minus one million because it's going up. <clears throat> uh, and then I want to add this to that. And so this is my this is my kind of take a step function at its most basic. So I'm going to mark this as an input and I'm going to save lambda. And that'll say, I don't really want that. Don't want it to name the map, but it doesn't really matter either. Uh, okay. Uh, and then the name is just going to be, I'll call it one step. Fun fact, I have learned that you cannot name a lambda step. That is problematic. So then I'm going to say reduce, oh, sorry, one other thing, uh, edit lambda. Uh, I need it to have two arguments so that I can use it in reduce, even though the second argument won't be used. So I'll do that, save lambda. And now I should be able to say reduce, uh, starting from, uh, sorry, starting from, I have to convert this to an RC ref. Uh, and then I can take 15 steps and I want to apply the one step function. And that'll give me back an RC ref and then I need to just convert that to an address. And then I'm just gonna paste that. There's a handy command, I used a shortcut for it, but I've got paste exact formula here. Uh, so rather than having to like cut and paste and do the formatting or copy and paste and then have to jiggle around with references, just paste exact formula. Super handy. Paste that in, copy down. And that does that. Okay, level four, you're now given one popping magma cell and a macro quantity. What is the cell where the lava stops? So now if the lava reaches the water, the flow is over. So you have to answer the first cell with water, if any, or where it ends up. Uh, so here, first again, I'm going to convert this address to an RC ref because that's what I find easier to work with. Then I'm going to say one step of that and no second argument. And then I'm going to edit this lambda and do something to make it work a little better. So let's do some let. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So this is the thing where I figure out the arrow. Uh, so I'll just call this arrow be that. Uh, and then we can replace this with arrow. Uh, and then what am I trying to say? Oh yeah, so then the terrain is uh, the same thing. Turn the RC ref into a reference, uh, but this time on TP. Um, and then I'm gonna wanna say if, or if the terrain is uh, zero or the terrain is R, that means you're in the water, then we just stop, which means that we should just give back input one. Otherwise, we mm, yes. Otherwise, we convert the arrow and add it to that. Okay. Uh, and so then I need to close my let and close something else as well. Something is not closed here. Oh yeah, close my if. Fine. All right. So then now, if I save lambda right now, it's going to overwrite my existing one step lambda, which I don't want to do. So I'm just going to. Uh, Copy this. Actually, I don't. I was going to copy the formula, but I can just use my paste exact formula trick. Um, and then I will save lambda, uh, and I'll call this step with stop. Very unimaginative, but it'll do. Uh, so then I want to reduce this by a sequence this many steps and use the function step with stop. Uh, and then I want to convert that back to an address. And that gives me BC30, which is what it's supposed to be. So I think I can just copy down now. Uh, 
Okay, and then there's a bonus of a level four. It asks, on level four, find all the game members where the lava flow ended in the sea. What's the sum of these game members? Okay, uh, so that is just, uh, just need an address to reference of each of these. Can I, I can't remember if I can take an array or not. I think I can. Yes, I can, hooray. Uh, and then if that is a zero, then it's in the sea. So that equals zero. Uh, and then we'll multiply that by the game number. And then just for fun, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste with function and wrap it in some. Another just like real handy quality of life trick. It's like, all right, I've worked these things out. Now I need to put the answer into the bonus as a max or the answer into the bonus as a sum or whatever. Uh, I can just paste with function and whatever. If I wanted the max of them or the median or whatever. Uh, one of my favorite little tricks. Anyway, just... Again, this is kind of the thing about robot, is just like all these quality of life improvements, like the speed of being able to rip apart a lambda, change a bunch of things, put it back together again. Um, I, I love it, as you can tell. All right, so now we're analyzing topography. Uh, so first we want to uh, take an address to reference of all of these on the TP tab. So the question is to find out what terrain there is. And you can see these all come out as letters except for the C, which comes out as zero. So I'm just going to change that S to zero. Uh, and while I'm here, uh, no, I won't do that now. All right. Uh, and then if I can remember how, Control Shift F3. Yes. I name these from top row. Uh, so then uh, I want to X look up this in color, returning from terrain. Uh, that's all fine. And then just, I don't know why I put it over there instead, but there we go. Level six. So now, depending on the, the topography, uh, you will either speed up or stop. Uh, I'm going to change it up here because this is where I've named it. So movement here is regular. Movement here is no, uh, no movement, regular, no movement. So I'm just changing these into multiples, double and triple. So now we're going to go in a certain direction, but we're going to go potentially double or zero or whatever. So again, I want to convert an address to a reference here on the map. Uh, and I want the exact same thing on TP. Uh, then I want to X look up this in color returning from movement. Uh, and I want to wrap this in uh, to RC ref. Uh, and then I want uh, to take the starting address, convert to an RC ref plus the offset times the multiple. That's my ending position, and then I want to convert all of that back to an address. And that should be my answer, and it seems to match. Okay, so we're flying. Uh, level seven, you're now given one popping cell and magma quantity. And actually, you know, before I do level seven, actually, I should be a little more tactical and do the bonus question because you want to lock someone out of that. Uh, so let's do some more uh, robot trickery here. So I'm going to. Uh, wrap this with a two-call ifs. Uh, I'm going to say if it's not blank, uh, but then what I want is actually the row column members up here. So these are my uh, addresses in in the sort of language that I use, meaning, uh, you know, this is row 9, column 38, this is row 10, column 36, and so on. Um, and so then uh, I'm trying to remember what my step uh, step with stop is the one I think I need, but I'm going to need to modify it a little. So let's see, this one, no, oh, this starts from an RC ref, so that's actually good. I thought it didn't. So then, oh yeah, so I think the only other condition I need to add is if the, no, I don't think I need to add it. Maybe this will work, which is fine. So then I'll cancel Lambda edit, uh, and then let's do a scan from this, uh, let's say sequence of 10 steps and step with stop. And you can see here, it's all just like it makes it makes one move and then it stays the same. Uh, let's see if I can get a different one. A lot of these just go like fall straight into the C to start, but I want to find one that moves just to make sure that I'm not. Okay, so here's one that goes from 37 to 36 to 35 and then it see and stops. So that's basically what I want, uh, but let's just put in a bigger number. Uh, we'll say 100. Uh, then I want to say, actually I was about to, let's do wrap with unique. 
uh, and then let's do wrap with rows. And then I can just copy this all down. And you can see this is where the no indirect thing really comes into its own because that would have taken minutes to calculate if every step of this was doing lots of different indirects. Uh, so then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paste with formula, uh, and paste with function, sorry, and I want max. Hooray! Okay. Um, sorry, I guess I didn't really explain the logic here, but uh, so this is this scan is taking all the steps that you go from a place, but so let's say if you start from here, you take one step, get to here, one step, get to here, but then as soon as you're in the sea or in a river, you stop moving. And so the number of steps to the sea is just the, the number of unique steps among the first hundred. If the max of these obviously was, was 100, then I would need to expand uh, to allow for more steps, but as it happens, it's not. All right, so now let's do level seven. All right, so now uh, we're moving with terrain again, but this time we've got a limited amount of magma. Um, and for this one, I think I'm just going to uh, do example seven. And uh, I've been meaning to set up a macro to do this for me, but never mind. I have not done that yet. Maybe I'll have that done by the time I get to Vegas. Maybe I won't. Uh, okay, so then uh, again, first thing I'm going to convert this to an RC ref. Um, so it's my start my arrow, my mult. Uh, so this is going to be RC uh, ref to ref. So reference that on the map. That gives me an arrow. And then I want to convert that arrow to an RC ref. Uh, and then here I want uh, RC ref to ref of this on TP. Uh, and then I want to look up that in color returning from, I think it was called movement. Yes. Uh, okay. And then my magma is initially this. Uh, so then my move is going to be, so it explains here that basically you, the amount of magma you have is the amount you can move. So if this is like, if you're on a triple move, which it is at the end, I think, um, but you only have one unit of magma, you only move one. So that, that's just going to be the min of these two. Uh, and so then your next position is this plus the arrow times the multiple. Uh, then that gives you an arrow, a multiple. Uh, and then your magma is just previous magma minus the move. Uh, copy down. And then this ends up making one more move. And then after that, it shouldn't. Yes. So it moves one more square here. And then after that, it doesn't move again, which is basically what we want. The maximum number magma is 20, so most I could need is 20 steps. Uh, I've got 23 there, so that's plenty. So then I just need to uh, convert this back to an address. So this is where it ends up. Convert that back to an address. Uh, and then data table this for all the levels. If I remember rightly, something breaks here, but that's okay. Uh, so let's check 125. Yes, so here I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to convert something that is not an arrow. So this is returning a blank, and I'm trying to convert that. So let's just wrap that in, if error, zero, up, down, and up. And then this also, um, so this is returning, what is it returning also a zero, which I thought was among the colors, but okay, never mind. Just have not found to zero. Copy that down, and then we've got Lots of answers, and we put them in, and I think that's yep, that's the whole case, which is about uh, about twenty minutes faster than I solved it on the day, but that's always the way with uh, with second times around. But uh, yeah, partly I wanted to just revisit the case to finish the damn thing properly, uh, especially now that I have some you know nicer arrow and map and things lambdas, but. Uh, also, I just wanted to show you some of the cool stuff that, uh, that you can do with Robot. All right, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.